What's going on, YouTube? This is Jim Afanis, and I want to talk to you guys today about the division. Um, finally, the day has come where the beta is for all Xbox One owners to play. If you have a PlayStation 4 or a PC, fret not. You'll get to check it out tomorrow, January 29th. It runs through the weekend. I spent about four hours or so on the division on Xbox One, and I have to say that it's a pretty damn good game. Um, the Division, when it first launched a couple years ago, at least the E3 preview at Ubisoft, no one really knew what it was about. Uh, it's undergone some significant changes in terms of graphic fidelity and overall gameplay, at least based on what I've seen through the years. And now here we are with the, for all intents and purposes, finished product and I have to say it does look pretty good now there was a lot of the polish that you probably saw or remember the first time you watched the trailer and unfortunately a lot of that is gone the reflections are very similar to the weird reflections in watchdogs where it doesn't really reflect the world very well behind it and graphics have been just generally muddied down. I did notice a few pop-ins occasionally, but nothing that ruined the game experience. Outside of that minor gripe list, everything else is glorious. It's a full open world RPG shooter in which you play as a sleeper agent for this company or agency, and your objective is to try to take back the world from uh, the hands of defeat, I guess. Uh, uh, some sort of biological virus hits the uh, hits the world, as far as I can tell. At least this game takes place in New York, but uh, Manhattan specifically. But I'm sure this virus is worldwide. But it hits on Black Friday. A lot of people get killed, and you're you're there to kind of clean up the mess and try to fix everything. You fight against other NPC humans. Um, so it's a little weird in, in the terms of like an RPG sense that like headshots do more damage, but you can actually hit a dude with a rocket launcher and he just keeps running at you if he's a lot higher level than you. And you'll just see a lot of his, the damage numbers pop up. So that's a little weird for some players. Uh, I'm used to RPGs and MMO type gameplay. So that doesn't really phase me as much as maybe some other players will, but uh, you're not going to get that visceral uh, a reaction or explosion if you hit a dude in the gut with a shotgun, for example, because it may not kill him. So be aware of that. Um, there's a really good cover system, and the game actually touts itself during the demo as a cover-based shooter. So Gears of War fans, which obviously I am one of, uh, will be right at home bouncing from cover to cover. Now, I did not get to play with anyone else. I just played by myself. But I can tell you that uh, I could see the potential for setting up some really cool crossfire definitely exists in the game. When you uh, want to vault over something or you want to use the cover system, you press A on the Xbox One. And if your crosshair is far enough away, it'll actually show you the trajectory you would take. All you have to do is hold down X, your character will jump over any wall and run to any next obstacle uh, and snap to cover. It's a really convenient really intuitive system every time i used it it worked flawlessly i was never stuck in weird positions around corners or having a hard time um you know like maneuvering the world because it just was very fluid now you can't jump or run freely everything is vaulting once you're pressed up against cover but that's okay and for the most part it works in combat again you'll be bouncing in and out of cover taking out other enemies there's plenty of cover, whether it be abandoned vehicles, whether it be bags of trash, garbage bags, uh, barricades. There's just a lot of stuff to use. And um, the world, the map, at least a little bit we get to see, is very large. There's a lot of activities to do. My map was completely cluttered with tons of things to do in the area. Whether it be rescue hostages in the middle of the street, whether it be go clear out um, virus infested homes and like running through and like rummaging through these houses while fighting waves of enemies, uh, whether it be defending checkpoints. And this is just all in the open world. This isn't even including the actual story, which looks pretty interesting. Um, the game focuses around progression in terms of a character base. So as you go off and explore and collect different parts of the base, you can upgrade this base, which will in turn unlock skills and perks. Uh, in the demo, they show us the medical, the medical portion. There's 10 upgrades you can get. And one of the upgrades is a health perk that allows you to cast a healing spell basically around you and your, uh, your allies to recover a small amount of health. Each of those perks 
can further be spec'd so your healing can be stronger on one person or healing over time or setting up totems or whatever i didn't even look through all of them but there's a slew of customization in that so you do get a little bit of you get two like active skills you can use which requires you know you unlocking portions of your base and that's a cool way to do it i like that um there's an independent character level as well, which determines how much gear you could have. In ter like you might find like a level three gun, but your character level one, so you have to um, work your way up to that. Guns are totally customizable. You have stock, you have the scope, you have the different types of uh, magazines. You have there's like five or six different upgrades for each gun. You can switch upgrades freely, so if you find a really cool scope you like, for example, and you want to slap it on your SMG, you can. And if you want to switch it over to your assault rifle, certain ones you can, certain ones you can't. Handles you can, for sure. That's really cool, so you can bounce around upgrades. You're not locked in at any time. If you put an upgrade on and you don't like it, just take it off. You don't have to buy any crazy mats or anything like that. You just snap them on and off. It's super easy, so it's tons of customization. It does not punish you at all for exploring and... Uh, you know, experimenting with your character to find just that perfect balance of guns and, you know, do you want a big, do you want a light gun for maximum mobility? Do you want a big, you know, machine gun and just walk really slowly? They have all that in the game. There's shotguns, there's pistols, sniper rifles, assault rifles, slew, a slew of uh, different types of weapons. So that's going to be a lot of fun to play through. To me, the most exciting part, uh, again, I, I think there's a lot of good things to say about this game. To me, the most exciting part is the Darkness Zone. So the Darkness Zone is a player versus player area. Uh, as you're running around, you may see other people. I believe it's probably instanced because I, I noticed when I was out in the city, I didn't really see too many other people uh, kind of in my world. But when you go into the Darkness Zone, that's when the real fun begins. That's fully open player versus player. Now, what's unique about the Darkness Zone is everything there is irradiated. So you have to put on this gas mask, and there's this weird purple haze, and it's very dark. The enemies are a lot tougher, but again, you're not, your enemy is not just you, or just the NPC characters, rather, but it's other um, division agents that are running around. When you find loot, and there's tons of loot to be had, whether you're killing NPCs, whether you're killing other people and taking their loot... Once you get the loot, you have to call an extraction. That's the only way to get it out of the darkness zone. So your character will pull out a flare gun and shoot it up in the air, and you have to wait for about a minute for a helicopter to come. Once the helicopter comes, you tie up your loot, and it takes it away. Let me tell you, when that flare goes off, the entire damn world is watching and waiting, and you have to freaking fight for your life to make sure that you can... Uh, you know, be the last one standing, or does it make sense to hide in the corner until the last second? The action gets fast and furious very quickly. Gunfire, there's people getting shot. If you kill too many people, you're branded as a rebel. When you're branded as a rebel, you appear on everyone's map. Everyone can see exactly where you are, and there's a bounty on your head. So uh, there's just a lot of open world possibility it's just an open world pvp zone that i think is going to be really really a lot of fun to play through especially if you want to go out there and get some of the better gear you know i was playing through the game and um i got to level 10 or 8 or i was getting level 8 gear rather and um i couldn't even use it yet but i was going through the uh the darkness zone and i was finding stuff way better than what i had so even in the short amount of time I play, that's clearly the area to be. It seems like everything is kind of roped off by instance or uh, uh, by level type. So the darkness zone is one through seven. So I'm assuming seven may be the highest level you can get in the game. Maybe you can't even get to level eight. I don't know. I stopped early because I want to save it for the real experience. But uh, I can tell you everything I've seen about this game looks awesome. The last thing I want to address: the elephant in the room. Um, is this the Destiny Killer? That's a really good question. I was thinking about that as I was playing through it in light of all the nonsense that's been happening over at Bungie the last few weeks. And um, I will say if people are yearning for a MMO-esque RPG type shooter, the Division may scratch that itch. Um, it's different than Destiny, no doubt about it. I think Destiny is uh, a much more visually polished game than this. And with the jetpack and Destiny, I think combat's pretty darn fun. You don't have that kind of weaponry in the division, although you do have different you have different other types of gadgets. And it's a Tom Clancy game, so pretty much all the goofy little drones and all that kind of stuff will probably make an appearance. Um, 
but uh, as far as like the progression and there actually being a robust story, four player matchmaking, there's a lot of things in here that I can just feel that Ubisoft in the boardroom was like, hey, let's do this because, you know, Destiny's taking off. Destiny doesn't have matchmaking in this. Let's put matchmaking in our game. Destiny has a kind of weird uh, loot progression system. Let's make it better where once you upgrade your base, you're guaranteed certain perks and certain upgrades. I could be completely wrong. I don't hate on Destiny at all. I love the game. Um, I'm a huge Destiny fan. I just see this as a great opportunity to add some competition to a pretty stagnant monopoly in terms of um, MMO shooters, which right now is just Destiny for the most part. So it'll be really cool to see what the division does to push the envelope. And then furthermore, how Bungie responds during Destiny 2. So um, I think this is going to be a great game. If you haven't had a chance to check out the beta, there's a lot of different websites that are giving away keys. I suspect they'll probably do some sort of open beta on the last day or two when they read the public reaction. I haven't really seen much on the internet yet. I can tell you just from my years of playing video games that this one is definitely going to be a smash hit. I think it's going to do very, very well. I think it's going to be received very well. And I think that Ubisoft has done enough in this game to really warrant people's attention. So if you haven't had a chance, go check it out. That is my love story on The Division. I will probably do a quick video later on the weekend. I got the beta for Xbox One, which right now is today is exclusive only to Xbox One. I also got it on PS4 and PC, and I'm really curious to see how it runs on PC, especially after that whole Watch Dogs debacle with the console parody. So I'll probably do a quick video on that at the weekend just to give you a quick update on what I think. And then, as always, I will give you guys world-class unboxing when my collector's edition comes. I don't know for what console or computer yet. That remains to be seen. Anyways, go check it out. I can't say enough good things about it. I'm actually going to go play some more right now. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.